One morning, Miffy looked out of her window. What did she see? A beautiful kite was flying above her house. Miffy looked down the kite string to see who was flying it. Far away, at the other end, Miffy could see Poppy Pig's niece, Grunty. She seemed to be having a lot of fun. Miffy climbed onto her scooter and rode as fast as she could to Poppy Pig's house. Good morning, Grunty. Where did you get that beautiful kite? I would like to have one too. It would be such fun. Boris Bear made it for me as a birthday present. Boris is so clever. He can make almost anything. Would you like to hold the string, Miffy, so you can see what fun it is to make the kite fly? Miffy took hold of the string and flew the kite. She had so much fun that she could hardly wait to have a kite of her own. Thank you, Grunty, said Miffy. I will go and ask Boris if he will make me a kite. Off Miffy went, riding her scooter through the forest as fast as she could. When Miffy got to Boris Bear's house, she asked him if he would make her a kite. Yes, Miffy. I'm happy to make you a kite, but as it's not your birthday, you must help me. But I don't know how to make a kite. Don't worry, Miffy. I'll show you how. We'll build the kite together, step by step. Firstly, Boris took two thin pieces of wood, one long and one short. He placed the short piece across the long piece and then held them while Miffy tied them together with a piece of string. Then Boris tied a longer piece of string all around the four ends of the wooden pieces. The frame of the kite was ready. Boris took a piece of bright red paper cut in the shape of the frame. Now we must fold the paper over the cords and glue it so that it will stay fastened onto the frame. Then the kite must also have a tail. Miffy took some strips of coloured cloth and tied them along another cord. She attached it to the bottom of the kite. It looked beautiful. Now we only have to attach a long piece of string. Then we can go out and fly the kite. Miffy held the string tightly and Boris held up the kite so that it could catch the wind. The kite went up and up. It danced in the sky. It was beautiful. Suddenly, it dived downward, straight into a tree. Miffy pulled and pulled on the cord, but the kite was stuck. How shall we get the kite out of the tree? said Miffy. She was very sad. Boris was already climbing the tree. He freed the kite and let it fall to the ground. The forest is not a good place to fly a kite, Miffy. There are too many trees. I'll take the kite to my house, said Miffy. There are not as many trees there. Thank you so much, Boris, for this beautiful kite. Miffy took the kite home on her scooter. She had such a wonderful time flying her new kite. There were two lovely kites in the air. One belonged to Grunty and one belonged to Miffy. One afternoon, Miffy and Melanie were playing in Miffy's garden. I will pretend to be a princess, said Miffy, and you can pretend to be the queen, Melanie. That will be fun, said Melanie. It was good fun. Princess Miffy and the good Queen Melanie had a lovely afternoon. Melanie! Miffy! called Mother Bunny out of the window. Come in now, it's time to go to bed. Soon Miffy and Melanie were tucked into their beds.
Would you girls like me to read you a bedtime story? said Miffy's mother. Oh, yes! Please read us a story, said Miffy and Melanie. Here is a nice story about a princess and a queen. Would you like to hear it? asked Miffy's mother. Miffy and Melanie laughed. They thought it was funny that Miffy's mother had found a story that was just the same as the one they had played in the garden. It was a wonderful story. And both little girls listened with wide eyes to every word. When she finished reading the story, Mother Bunny turned out the lights and said, Sleep well, little ones. Tomorrow is another day. When it was dark, Melanie whispered to Miffy, That was a wonderful story. Wouldn't it be good if we could read another one? Miffy turned on her bedside lamp. She took another book from her shelf. Can you read it, Melanie? asked Miffy. Girls, girls, you're supposed to be sleeping, Mother Bunny said. When the lights were out again, Melanie whispered very softly to Miffy. I can't read yet, Miffy. I wish I could. Me too, whispered Miffy. Soon the little girls fell asleep. And before they knew it, it was morning. Wake up! Wake up! Melanie and Miffy! It's time to get up and go to school. At school, the teacher asked the class, Do you like stories, children? Would you like to be able to read them yourselves? Miffy and Melanie looked at each other. That's just what we would like, whispered Miffy to Melanie. All that day, the children began to learn how to read letters and words. It was very exciting. At the end of the afternoon, the teacher said, I have a nice storybook here. Who would like to read a few words from it? Miffy and Melanie looked at each other again. They were so surprised to see that it was the very same book Miffy's mother had read to them. Both girls raised their hands. The teacher picked Miffy and handed her the book. Miffy started to read. Once upon a time, there was a lovely princess. The teacher was surprised that Miffy read so well. You've learnt to read very quickly, Miffy, she said. I know this story by heart. One day, when it was too rainy to go outside, Miffy's mother said, This is a good day to paint your room, Miffy. It hasn't been painted in a very long time. What a good idea, said Miffy. Can I help? Yes, said Father Bunny. But first we must take everything out of your room. Miffy said, I have lots of pictures on the wall. I have my cupboard and my bed and my shelf. Can't we just paint around them? That won't do at all, said Miffy's mother. We must take everything out of the room so we can paint the walls evenly. Very well, said Miffy. I will help. First I will take all of my pictures off the wall. But I can't move my bed, or the cupboard, or the shelf. Your mother and I will move the heavy things, Miffy. You can think of what colour you would like to paint your room. I have lots of different coloured paints in my workshop. So while her mother and father were carrying everything out of her room, Miffy began to think about what colour she would like her room to be. If it were blue, it might seem like it's always night time, she said. If it were red, it might look too hot. If it were green, 
It might look like my room was outside in the garden. If it were white, it would be the same colour as me and I might feel lost inside it. Miffy looked out of her window and noticed a bright yellow tulip. If my room were yellow like that tulip, it would be sunny and bright. I would like my room to be yellow, said Miffy finally. Father Bunny said, I have some lovely yellow paint. I will paint the high parts of the wall, Miffy, and you can paint the low parts. You will be able to learn how to paint. Mother said, First you must put on an apron, Miffy. It would be a pity to get paint on your lovely dress. So Miffy put on an apron and her father very carefully mixed the bright yellow paint. He took a big brush and he gave Miffy a small brush. Then they set to work. Miffy, said Father Bunny, try to paint up and down in the same direction. Like this. Miffy learnt very quickly. Soon the room was a lovely happy yellow colour. And Miffy's things were soon back in their place. Miffy felt happy too. Her room felt fresh, bright and clean. It's a nice feeling, she said, to have a freshly painted room and that I help to do it. Boris and Barbara were thinking about Miffy's birthday. What can we make for her? asked Barbara. Well, said Boris, spring will soon be here and I know that Miffy enjoys seeing the baby birds every year. What if I make her a special birdhouse that she can watch each day? Oh, that's a splendid idea, Boris, said Barbara. It should be painted brightly to attract a mother bird. I will make it an exact copy of Miffy's own house, only very small, just the right size for little birds. I have a picture of Miffy's house to guide me. Boris selected some of his best wooden planks, some pieces that would make the walls, a strong piece of wood for the floor, and two sturdy pieces for the roof. First he drew a plan that showed the right sizes of wood and how they would all be fitted and nailed together. Then Boris measured a piece of wood with his special ruler and used a pencil to mark where the plank should be cut. He clamped the wood to his workbench so it would be held steady. And then he took out one of his sharp saws. He moved the saw back and forth over the line he had drawn with the pencil. He did this for each piece of wood until every part of the birdhouse was cut to the right size. Next he used a hammer to fasten all the pieces together. Finally there was a perfect little house. I will use my drill to make a little hole in the house, just big enough for the mother bird to get in and out. She will collect twigs and grass to make a cosy nest inside. Now it's ready for you to paint it, Barbara, said Boris. Barbara Bear had lots of jars of bright paint and a brush for each colour. Soon 
Soon the little birdhouse really did look like a tiny model of Miffy's own house, with one small difference. On Miffy's birthday, Boris and Barbara brought the birdhouse to Miffy's house and set it up on a pole in Miffy's garden. Happy birthday, Miffy, said Boris and Barbara. We have a surprise for you. Come and see. Miffy was delighted with her birdhouse. It looks just like my house, said Miffy. But there's something different. Instead of a door, it has only that little hole in the front. That's a door for birds, said Boris. It's not a bunny door. They all laughed. Oh, how wonderful to have such clever friends, said Miffy. You have made me happy, and your present will also make a mother bird very happy. Now we all have something to be happy about. Miffy loved music and she was learning to play the recorder. You play that very nicely, Miffy, said Mother Bunny. But that tune needs more players. Miffy said, Yes, I can invite my friend Aggie. She can play the accordion. Yes, said Mother Bunny, and Poppy Pig plays the double bass beautifully. I will call her on the telephone and invite her to join us. On the telephone, Poppy said, Of course I'll come. I like to play music. Can I bring my little niece, Grunty? She's staying with me this week. She plays the piano. Oh dear, said Mother Bunny. What a pity. We don't have a piano. Do bring little Grunty, though. We'll find something for her to play. Soon Aggie arrived, and now they could play a two-part melody. It took a long time for Poppy Pig to carry her big double bass up the hill to Miffy's house. At last, she and Grunty arrived. Then, Miffy, Aggie and Poppy began to play a three-part melody. sounded even better, but little Grunty had nothing to play, and that was no fun for her. We have no real piano, Grunty, said Miffy, but I do have a nice toy piano. I'm sure 
you can make it sound wonderful. Now they could all play together. How wonderful it sounded! It was a rainy day. What shall I do today, said Miffy. I can't go out in the rain to play with my friends. Well, you can help me do the dishes, said Mother Bunny. So Miffy dried the dishes. Then she swept the floor. Thank you for your help, said Mother Bunny. Miffy looked out of the window again. Still, she had to stay in the house. What else can I do for you, Mother? asked Miffy. You've helped me enough, said Mother Bunny. Why don't you take your crayons and draw some nice pictures? Yes, said Miffy. I like to draw pictures. So Miffy drew a picture of her back garden with a blue sky and the sun shining brightly. But when Miffy looked out of her window to her back garden, the sky was not blue and the sun was not shining. It was raining harder than ever. What should I do now? she sighed. What shall I do, Mother? asked Miffy. I've dried the dishes, I've swept the floor, and I've drawn a picture. Why don't you read a book? said Mother Bunny. Oh, that's a good idea, said Miffy. Miffy read a nice story about a sunny day at the beach. She looked out of her window again and saw that it was still raining hard. Her mother said, Miffy, if you listen to some nice music, it will make you feel happy. So Miffy listened to some music from sunny Spain. But outside her little house, it began to look like the North Pole. While the music was playing, the rain had turned to snow. Mother Bunny called, Miffy, Miffy! Look outside, it's so beautiful! How strange, Miffy thought. It has been raining all day and Mother says it's beautiful. Miffy looked through the window. What did she see? Everything was covered with soft white snow. The sky was blue again. How wonderful! Miffy took a warm coat and a scarf. She dressed herself and ran outside where she could play with her friends at last. One morning, Miffy heard a strange scratching at her front door. What could that be? She wondered. 
She opened the door and there was a friendly little brown dog. The little dog wagged its tail happily. What's your name, little dog? asked Miffy. But the dog only went... <coughs> Miffy laughed and said, I think your name is Snuffy. Shall I give you some water? It's hot today. You must be very thirsty. <coughs> Miffy went into the kitchen. She filled a bowl with cold water. Snuffy happily drank the water. Miffy asked her, Would you like to play with me in our garden? Miffy led Snuffy to the garden. Show me what you can do. Can you sit? Snuffy sat. Can you sit up and beg? Snuffy sat up. Can you roll over? Snuffy rolled over. What else can you do? Suddenly, Snuffy pricked up her ears and started running around the house. What's the matter? asked Miffy. Is there something wrong? Snuffy stopped at the kitchen window and started to bark. <coughs> Miffy ran up to the window and looked in to see what was the matter. She saw that she had forgotten to turn off the water at the kitchen sink and it was still running. What a clever dog you are, Snuffy, said Miffy. When I went to the kitchen to get water for you to drink, I forgot to turn off the tap. Miffy went quickly into the house. She turned off the water. Oh, Snuffy, said Miffy, you are such a clever little dog. Now you must be very hungry. I'll give you a biscuit. Said Snuffy happily. Her little tail was wagging with joy. It was so nice that you came to visit me. You can come to see me any time you like. <coughs> Snuffy barked happily. Which meant, yes, I will. One day, Boris Bear was working very hard. He was sawing logs into planks. Just then, Miffy came into the woods to visit. What are you doing, Boris? asked Miffy. I'm sawing these logs into planks said Boris. What do you do with the planks? asked Miffy. I can make lots of things with these wooden planks, Miffy. Let me show you. Boris took Miffy into his house to show her what he had made with the planks of wood. Oh! 
I made this table with my planks. I made this bench with my planks. I even made these walls with my planks. I can make almost anything with wooden planks. Come and see. He took Miffy to his workbench. I'll make something special for you and while I'm working on it, you can try to guess what it is. Boris put two planks side by side on his workbench. Is it going to be a table? asked Miffy. No, said Boris. It's not going to be a table. Then he put two more planks at the ends. Oh, said Miffy. Is it going to be a bench when you turn it over? No, said Boris. It won't be a bench. Then he put two more planks by the sides. I know, said Miffy. Is it going to be a box when you put the top on it? No, said Boris. It doesn't have a top and it won't be a box. Then Boris pounded in nails all around to hold it together. Then he took a round log and sawed off four pieces. He put the four round pieces of wood on the sides. Now you can see what it will be, said Boris. I know, shouted Miffy happily. It will be a little wagon. You're right, said Boris. It will be a little wooden wagon and it's nearly finished. Miffy jumped with joy when she saw it all finished. What a lovely wagon, she said. Thank you so much, Boris. Step into your new wagon, Miffy, said Boris, and I will pull you home. Miffy carefully sat down in her wagon and rode home in great style. It was a beautiful morning and Miffy thought, this is a perfect day to visit my Auntie Alice. Miffy asked her mother if she could go to Auntie Alice's house. If you go, you should bring Auntie Alice a nice present, said Mother Bunny. Miffy thought, what kind of present can I bring my auntie? Miffy looked out of her window and saw beautiful flowers growing in her garden. Can I pick some flowers from the garden to give to Auntie Alice? asked Miffy. Yes, of course, said her mother. Miffy picked a lovely blue flower, then a yellow flower, and a red flower. These flowers make a beautiful present, thought Miffy. I'm sure Auntie Alice will be pleased with these. Miffy was walking down the path on her way to visit her Auntie Alice when she passed Poppy Pig's house. Hello, Miffy. What are you carrying? I'm taking some flowers to my Auntie Alice, answered Miffy. Oh dear, cried Poppy. Are you hurt? I'm okay, 
cried Miffy. But my flowers are ruined. I can't visit Auntie Alice without taking her a present. Don't be sad, Miffy, said Poppy. I will give you a big bunch of fresh carrots from my garden. Your auntie will love them. Oh, that's very kind of you, Poppy. You're my friend, Miffy, said Poppy. And friends always help each other. So Poppy led Miffy to her garden and pulled out lots of fresh carrots and put them in a basket for Miffy to carry. Miffy thanked Poppy Pig. Poppy was a good friend. When Miffy arrived at Auntie Alice's house, she gave her auntie the fresh carrots. Her aunt was very pleased. Miffy told Auntie Alice how Poppy had helped her. Miffy Auntie Alice told her. You're lucky to have such a good friend. No one can be happy without friends. No one can be happy without fresh biscuits either, said Auntie Alice, as she put a plate full of warm biscuits before Miffy. They had come fresh from the oven. Mmm, thought Miffy. My auntie is a good friend too. One day, Miffy thought it would be great fun to have her good friend Aggie stay overnight with her. So she asked her mother, Can I please invite Aggie to stay with me tonight? That would be very nice, said Miffy's mother. I will phone Aggie's mother to ask if that is okay. That afternoon, the doorbell rang, and there stood Aggie with her little suitcase. I've brought a little present for Miffy, said Aggie. It's a drawing I made myself. Miffy was so pleased with Aggie's drawing that she went straight to her room and hung it on the wall. It's beautiful! said Miffy. Aggie began to unpack her suitcase. She had brought her nightdress, her toothbrush, a little picture book and, of course, her own little teddy bear. What a surprise! said Miffy. It's almost the same as my teddy bear. Look! teddy bears looked exactly alike. Just then Mother Bunny called them for dinner. And of course their teddy bears were hungry too. Be careful you don't mix them up children. Your teddy bears look almost the same. They are even the same colour. But I know which is mine, said Miffy. And I know which is mine, said Aggie. Good, said Mother Bunny. Mother served them a nice dinner. There were carrots, leeks and four delicious tomatoes. It smelt so good that the little bunny girls ate every bit. After dinner, it was bedtime. Sleep well, said Mother Bunny, so that tomorrow you won't be too tired to play. Miffy was feeling sleepy, but Aggie was not. I can hear strange noises, she said. 
That's the wind blowing through the trees, said Miffy. That's normal. It's so dark in here, said Aggie. I can open the door a little, said Miffy. I still can't fall asleep, said Aggie. So Miffy turned on her little bedside light and saw that Aggie was holding Miffy's teddy bear instead of her own. Now I see why you can't sleep, said Miffy. You don't have your own teddy bear. I knew something was wrong, said Aggie. Our teddy bears look the same, but each has its own special smell. Of course, said Miffy. My bear smells like me. And my bear smells like me, said Aggie. That's how we know which one is our own, said Miffy. So when each little bunny girl had her own teddy bear, each with its own special smell, they both fell asleep. And had beautiful teddy bear dreams until the morning. One day, a letter arrived from Auntie Alice. Miffy's mother opened it and read that Auntie Alice was going to have a costume party for all of her young friends. Miffy is invited and she must be sure to come in a disguise, read Mother Bunny. Oh, what fun, said Miffy. What is a disguise? It means you have to wear a mask, so you will look like someone else, said Miffy's mother. Now, who could you pretend to be? In the meantime, Poppy Pig got an invitation. Boris Bear got an invitation. Barbara Bear also got one. Even Snuffy was invited. Auntie Alice had asked all of them to her costume party. On the day of the party, it was very funny. Auntie Alice couldn't be sure who was coming through her front door. Miffy arrived wearing a Poppy Pig mask. Poppy Pig arrived wearing a Barbara Bear mask. Barbara Bear arrived disguised as Auntie Alice. Auntie Alice herself was disguised as Boris Bear. Boris Bear arrived wearing a Snuffy mask. And Snuffy arrived wearing a Miffy mask. What wonderful disguises we all have, said Auntie Alice. Now, before we have some ice cream and cake, we must try to guess who everyone really is. Whoever guesses all the right names will win a special prize. They all looked at each other very carefully. Who is behind this mask? Who could this be? Who is this? And who is this? The disguises were so perfect that no one could guess. Then they all shouted at once to Auntie Alice. We know who you are. You are really Auntie Alice. We can tell by your white apron. Then they all took off their masks. <laughs> Auntie Alice said, well, you all guessed who I was. So you can all have some ice cream and cake. You'll all get a special prize too. They all enjoyed their ice cream and cake.
After that, each went home with a brightly coloured balloon. And Miffy thought, what a wonderful party that was. But I'm glad I'm really me. <laughs> Miffy was about to go on a great new adventure. Goodbye, Mother, said Miffy as she set off for a camping trip with her forest friends Boris and Barbara Bear. They knew all the best places in the woods, but this time they decided to camp high on the hillside meadow behind Miffy's house. They had to climb up and up, and their backpacks were very heavy. But Miffy was a strong little bunny, and she was able to keep up with Boris and Barbara. At the top of the hill, the countryside looked so beautiful. It was springtime, and the meadows were full of lovely flowers. Birds and butterflies filled the air all around them. Shall we make our camp here? asked Miffy. I think it will be too windy on the top of the hill, said Boris. If we go a little bit down into the valley, we will be protected from the wind. So they went down into the valley. Miffy was beginning to get a little tired. Shall we make our camp here? asked Miffy. I'm afraid the ground is too steep to put up our tents, said Barbara. I see a lovely lake down there. That would be a beautiful place for our camp. So they headed for the little lake. We shall make our camp here, shouted Miffy happily. It was indeed a beautiful place and Miffy was now quite tired. We shall put up our tents, said Boris. And you can rest, Miffy, said Barbara. I won't rest while you work, said Miffy. I will go to the lake and get some water. I'll come with you, said Barbara. Miffy tasted the cool water. It was delicious. Miffy told Boris and Barbara that if they would make a fire, she would cook some delicious carrot soup, for her mother had put some fresh carrots in her backpack. Boris said, That's a good idea. I brought some firewood in my backpack. And Barbara said, I brought a pan and some bowls and spoons in my backpack. Soon it began to grow dark. They all enjoyed the delicious carrot soup by the light of the campfire. After dinner, they were all very sleepy. They said good night and went to bed in their tents. The sound of birds and the first rays of the morning sun awakened them. Good morning. Good morning, Barbara, called Miffy. Morning, said Boris sleepily. They packed up their tents and carefully cleaned the camp fireplace. They drank some fresh water and happily made their way home over the lovely hills. Camping is such great fun, said Miffy to Boris and Barbara. Let's do it again soon. Miffy has a special calendar in her room. It has a mark for each of her family and friends' birthdays. She doesn't want to forget a single one. There is a mark for Boris Bear's birthday. And for Barbara Bear's birthday, there is a mark for Poppy Pig's birthday. 
There is a mark for her mother's birthday and a mark for her father's birthday. And look, there is even a mark for Snuffy's birthday. And it is today. It's a good thing I have my calendar marked, said Miffy. It would be terrible if I forgot a dear friend's birthday. But what can I give to Snuffy for her birthday? Can a little dog eat ice cream and cake? I don't think so. So Miffy went to her mother for help. Mother, today is Snuffy's birthday, she said. What shall I give her? Well, said Miffy's mother, dogs love to play with toys. Why don't you give Snuffy one of your old toys? You have so many. So Miffy went to her room and looked at all her wonderful toys. Miffy thought, I love all of my nice toys, but I also love Snuffy. What shall I do? Maybe I should make something, especially for Snuffy. She went to her mother and asked, What can I make for Snuffy? I have a pretty bowl said Mother Bunny. You can paint Snuffy's picture on it and it will be a wonderful bowl for her water. Mother Bunny looked under the kitchen sink and there it was. What a good idea, said Miffy. I will use my paint box to make it beautiful and I will paint Snuffy's picture on it. Soon it was finished, and it was beautiful. Miffy ran outside and called, Snuffy! Snuffy! Happy birthday! Come and get your present! She shouted. When Snuffy saw the beautiful little bowl with her picture on it, she wagged her tail and jumped for joy. She was so happy to have such a lovely birthday present. Miffy was happy too, because she painted the bowl all by herself. She took a watering can and filled the bowl with fresh water. Snuffy drank the water from her new bowl and had a very happy birthday. Miffy! Miffy! called Mother Bunny. It's time to get up. The sun is shining. But Miffy didn't get up. Her mother called again. Miffy, it's time to get up. Mother Bunny went into Miffy's room and saw straight away that Miffy did not look at all well. She felt Miffy's forehead. I think you have a fever, Miffy. I must take your temperature. She went to get a thermometer and put it under Miffy's arm. Mother Bunny looked at the thermometer. Oh dear, Miffy, you do have a fever, Miffy said. Oh, Mother, I feel hot and cold all at the same time. Yes, said her mother, that is a sign of having the flu. I'll bring you an extra blanket and some water. When you have the flu, you must drink a lot. I'll 
bring you breakfast in bed. Would you like that? I don't feel at all hungry, said Miffy sadly. If you're not hungry, then you definitely have the flu. Who can that be so early in the morning, said Miffy's mother. She went to the door. It was Miffy's friend, Aggie. Can Miffy come out and play, Mrs Bunny? said Aggie. That's a lovely idea, Aggie, said Mother Bunny. But Miffy's still in bed. I'm afraid she has the flu. I hope she'll feel better tomorrow and can play with you then. An hour later, the doorbell rang again. Mother Bunny opened the door and there stood Boris and Barbara Bear. They also wanted to visit Miffy, but of course Miffy was still in bed. And Mother Bunny said, You know, Boris and Barbara, that the flu is catching. It would be best if you didn't visit Miffy today. Boris and Barbara sadly walked away from Miffy's house. Mother peeked into Miffy's room again and saw that she was still sleeping. Just then the doorbell rang again. Who could that be this time? said Mother. When Mother Bunny opened the door, there were Boris, Barbara and Aggie again. You know Miffy's ill in bed. Why have you come back again? We've brought Miffy some presents, they all said together. We want to make her feel better. We've brought some fruit, some apples, some grapes, and some oranges. Thank you, said Mother Bunny. The fruit will be good for her. I'll take it to her straight away. Mother Bunny brought the fruit to Miffy, who was happy to have such thoughtful friends. She ate the apple first. It was delicious, and Miffy thought she was feeling better already. And sure enough, the next morning she felt much better. And soon was outside, playing happily with her friends. One day, Miffy came home from school. She went into the kitchen and saw that her mother was busy clearing the table. Hello, Mother, said Miffy. Hello, Miffy, dear. While you were at school, I had a visit from some friends. We had tea and biscuits, and I showed them the beautiful drawings you made. Now I must wash the dishes and put them all away. Shall I help you with the dishes? asked Miffy. Thank you, said Mother Bunny. But you must be sure to put everything in its proper place. The forks go with the forks. The spoons with the spoons and the cups with the cups. Miffy was happy to help. As her mother washed the forks, the spoons and the cups, Miffy dried them carefully. Then she began to put them away. There were four forks and Miffy put them in their proper place. There were four spoons, and Miffy put them in their proper place. But there were only three cups. One, two, three. Mother, said Miffy, there were four forks and there were four spoons, but there are only three cups. Oh dear, said Mother Bunny. Now where is that fourth cup? It's not in the sink. I'll go and look for it, said Miffy. 
Miffy began to search the entire kitchen. The missing cup wasn't on the oven or in the pot. It wasn't in the cupboard. The missing cup didn't seem to be anywhere. I can't find it anywhere, said Miffy. Hmm, said Mother. Did I leave it on the table? The fourth cup was not on the table. But look, Mother, said Miffy. My drawings are on the table. Yes, said Mother. I brought them from your room. You can put them back, but make sure you put them in their proper place. So Miffy took her drawings and went to her room. She put her drawings on the shelf where she kept all of her things. And there it was. The missing cup was on Miffy's shelf. Mother! Mother! shouted Miffy. I found the cup! Oh, silly me, said Mother Bunny. When I went into your room to get your drawings, I had a cup of tea in my hand. I must have put it down on your shelf. Now we have four cups again. Thanks to you, Miffy. One, two, three, four. It was a beautiful day. Miffy thought it would be nice to play with Snuffy. Miffy went out to look for her friend. She called her name. Snuffy! Snuffy! Where are you? She looked in front of the house. She looked at the back of the house. She looked behind the tree. But Snuffy was not there. She called her name louder and louder. Snuffy! Snuffy! Where are you? Then suddenly, from behind the hill, she saw something moving. Yes, it was Snuffy. Oh, I'm so glad that you heard me, said Miffy. I thought I couldn't find you, but now you're here and we can play together. Would you like that? Snuffy wagged her tail and flapped her ears. Of course she wanted to play with Miffy. You must be hungry and thirsty, said Miffy. First I will get you something to eat and drink. Miffy went into the house and came back with a bowl of biscuits and a bowl of water, one in each hand. Snuffy was so impatient, she jumped up and down and made Miffy drop the bowl of biscuits. They rolled all over the ground. Now, Snuffy, said Miffy, you must learn to be patient. Now all of your biscuits have spilt onto the floor. No, Snuffy, said Miffy. You mustn't eat biscuits from the ground. Miffy was not really angry with Snuffy, but she wanted her to learn a lesson. Snuffy looked very sad. Don't be sad, Snuffy, said Miffy. There is still some more biscuits in the kitchen. Now, sit quietly and wait while I bring them. No, 
Snuffy, said Miffy. You must learn to be patient. Now, sit there and wait. Snuffy decided to follow Miffy into the house. No, said Miffy. You must sit and wait here. When Miffy returned with a new bowl of biscuits, Snuffy jumped up again and barked with joy. No, said Miffy. This time you must sit and be patient. Snuffy sat and waited patiently and then Miffy gave her the new bowl of biscuits to enjoy. After that, Snuffy had a nice drink of water and she and Miffy played happily together for the rest of the afternoon. It was Miffy's birthday and her mother had baked a beautiful chocolate cake. She had set the table with party hats and colourful napkins and had hung the birthday decorations all around their little house. It was already 12 o'clock and no one had come to the party. Miffy wondered if anyone would come. She looked out of her window but couldn't see anybody coming. Where is everyone? she asked her mother. We sent invitations to all your friends, Miffy, said her mother. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Just then, the doorbell rang. There was Miffy's friend, Aggie. She was carrying a beautifully wrapped present for Miffy. Oh, hello, Aggie, said Miffy. You're the first to arrive. What a lovely looking present. I wonder what it is. You must wait until everyone is here, Miffy, said Aggie. And then you can open all your presents. Just then, the doorbell rang again. There were all the rest of Miffy's friends. There was Poppy Pig, Grunty, Boris Bear and Barbara. They were all carrying mysterious presents. Before we open the presents, Let's all have some birthday cake and ice cream, said Mother Bunny. They all agreed. Miffy was wondering what was in all those pretty packages. As soon as they had finished the sweets, the cake and the ice cream, Aggie said, Now you can open my present first. Miffy quickly opened her present. There was a lovely book and also a wooden plank. This is a beautiful book, said Miffy. But what is the plank for? You'll see, Miffy, said Aggie. Poppy Pig said, Now you can open the presents from Grunty and me. Miffy was surprised to find two more books and two more wooden planks. Barbara's present was also a book and two planks. This is really funny, said Miffy. I can read the books, but what can I do with these planks? Well, you'll just have to open the present from me, said Boris Bear, and then you will see. The present from Boris was only an envelope, but when Miffy opened it, she understood the joke. Inside was a drawing of a bookshelf. We'll all help you put it together. Mm -hmm. 
Soon Miffy had a beautiful bookshelf. All the planks fitted together perfectly. It's just what I needed, said Miffy happily. Now I have more space for all my books and toys. Thank you all for the wonderful surprise. Miffy's Auntie Alice was a dancer when she was young. She still loved to dance and she decided to give dancing lessons to Miffy and her friends. On Saturday morning, Miffy, Winnie, Melanie and Aggie went to Auntie Alice's house on the hill for their dancing lessons. First, of course, Auntie Alice gave them each some of her delicious biscuits and cocoa. Then, dressed in their dancing outfits, they were ready to start. Dancing looks easy, said Auntie Alice. But it really is hard work. You must work hard to learn the proper dance steps. First, I will show you what to do. Now, you girls try it together. It was so difficult. But when Auntie Alice played the rhythm on the piano, they finally got it right. Now I'll show you how to twirl round without losing your balance. You will feel sore sometimes, said Auntie Alice. But when you become real dancers, you will feel happy. Every Saturday, up and down and round they went. They jumped and turned and posed. Always keeping in time with the piano. It was hard work, but it was great fun. Miffy tried to move and stand gracefully. It made her feel good about herself. She wondered if Boris Bear could be a dancer, and she asked Auntie Alice. Is dancing only for girls? Goodness me, said Auntie Alice. Dancing is for everyone. Some of the greatest dancers are boys. Dancing gives them strength and good balance. I should ask Boris and Barbara Bear to join our dancing class, said Miffy. Yes, said Auntie Alice. If we have a larger group, you can perform dances for your parents. They will enjoy seeing how good you have become. The girl bunnies all worked very hard. Miffy wondered. Boris really liked to be a dancer. On her next visit to Boris Bear's house, Miffy was surprised to discover that Boris was a dancer. One morning, Miffy received a postcard from her good friend, Boris Bear. Boris lived in a wooden house he had built all by himself. It was right in the middle of the forest. The postcard showed a beautiful picture of his house. On the other side, Boris wrote, Dear Miffy, 
Please come and visit me. I would like you to help me pick blueberries. The forest is full of blueberries at this time of year. Miffy thought that would be a fun thing to do. So she asked Mother Bunny if she could visit Boris and pick some blueberries. Yes, but you must be very careful. Stay on the forest path so you won't get lost. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I know the way. Her mother said, I'll pack a basket of sandwiches so you and Boris can have a nice picnic to go with the blueberries you pick. Be careful, Miffy's mother said again as she waved goodbye to Miffy. Miffy walked into the forest. She heard birds singing. She smelt lovely flowers. She saw many colourful butterflies flitting this way and that. The forest was full of wonderful things to see, smell and hear. She looked to the right. She looked to the left. She looked up. She looked all around. Suddenly, she looked straight ahead and there was Boris's house. Boris came out to greet her. Hello, Miffy. I'm so happy you could come. There are so many delicious blueberries to pick in the forest. They picked and picked. Soon their baskets were full of fresh ripe blueberries and their stomachs were also full of fresh ripe blueberries and sandwiches too. They had a wonderful time. Soon it began to get a little dark. Oh, said Miffy, it's time for me to go home. Do you think you can find your way? asked Boris. He was a little worried that Miffy might get lost. Don't worry, Boris. I know the way, said Miffy. And she started to walk home with her basket full of blueberries. But it started to get darker and darker. Miffy looked to the left. She looked to the right. But all of the trees looked the same. I'm afraid I am lost after all, said Miffy. No, said Boris. You're not lost. I shall show you the way out. Miffy was pleased to see that Boris had been following her on her way home. He walked with her all the way to the edge of the forest. Here we are, said Boris. There is your little house. Now you can find your way home by yourself. Miffy waved goodbye to Boris and she thought, I'm so glad to have such a good friend. One morning when the sun came up, Miffy woke up feeling very hungry. I would love to have some nice fresh carrots for breakfast, she said. She looked in the kitchen. There were no carrots there. She looked in the cupboard. There were no carrots there. She looked on the table. And there were no carrots there either. Oh dear, said Miffy. When you have a taste for carrots, nothing else will do. Miffy felt very hungry. Just then, the doorbell rang. Miffy opened the door and there stood her friend, Poppy Pig. Come in, Poppy, said Miffy. I would like to offer you some breakfast. But I don't have any carrots. Dear 
dear me, said Poppy Pig. Did you look everywhere? Yes, answered Miffy. I looked in the kitchen. I looked in the cupboard. I looked on the table. But, said Poppy, did you look in the cooking pot on the stove? Oh no, said Miffy. I forgot to look in the pot. They both hurried to look in the pot. But the pot was empty. What a disappointment. Now I'm hungry too, said Poppy Pig. I know what we can do. We'll walk to my house. I have some lovely carrots growing in my garden. But I walked past your garden yesterday, Poppy, and I didn't see any carrots there. Poppy laughed. Let's go to my garden and I will show you some. Miffy wondered how that could be. Do carrots grow in just one day? And together they walked towards Poppy's house. Miffy was very puzzled. When they arrived at Poppy's garden, Miffy looked and looked, but could not see a single carrot. But there are no carrots here, said Miffy, who was very disappointed and still very hungry. I knew they couldn't really grow in one day. Of course not, said Poppy. But there are carrots here, Miffy. You just can't see them. She reached down and pulled a lovely carrot out of the ground. Aha, said Miffy. Carrots grow under the ground. That's why I couldn't see them. Please, Miffy, take as many as you like, said Poppy. When they had finished, Miffy and Poppy walked back to Miffy's house, looking forward to a nice carrot breakfast. Miffy was looking out of her window on a stormy day. The wind was blowing, leaves were flying through the air and falling on the ground. But soon the sun came out and the wind stopped. Once again, it was a fine, bright day. Miffy took a ball and went out to play. Miffy threw the ball high in the air fell to the ground and rolled next to a tree. Miffy ran to pick it up. And what do you think she saw? It was a baby bird. The storm had blown it out of its nest and it was too young to fly. Oh dear, said Miffy. This poor little baby bird needs help, but what should I do? Miffy took the bird into her house and showed it to her mother. How can I help this poor baby bird? I think the storm blew it out of its nest. It must be hurt. Mother Bunny looked at the baby bird. I think the bird is okay, Miffy. Oh, that's wonderful, Mother. Can I keep it? I will wash it and feed it and make a nice little bed for it. 
But Miffy's mother said, I don't think a house is the right place for this little bird. It needs its own mother. She must be looking for her baby. They looked outside and saw the mother bird flying all round the tree, looking for the baby bird. We must put the little bird back into its nest in the tree. It's too small to fly up there all by itself. So they put the bird out onto the grass and went to get a ladder. The little bird went and made a little hop. Then it went and made two hops. It opened its little wings and tried to flap them. Then it went and flapped its little wings again. Miffy and her mother came back with the ladder and set it up against the tree. And just then, the little bird went. It flapped its little wings faster and faster and started to fly. It flew round and round, up and up, and right into its nest, all by itself. The little bird is back in its nest, said Miffy. Look, its mother is flying home, and her baby is safe and sound. Miffy and her mother carried the ladder back inside. And Mother Bird was happy to have her baby home again. Miffy was playing in the garden with her ball when Poppy Pig's niece Grunty came running over to Miffy's house. Miffy! Miffy! shouted Grunty. Let's play hide and seek. That's a great game, Grunty, said Miffy. But there are only two of us. We need more than two people to play hide and seek. Look, Miffy, here is Snuffy. Let's go and get Boris and Barbara Bear. Then there will be four of us. And Snuffy will be able to watch us play hide and seek. They all went off to the forest. Soon they arrived at Boris and Barbara Bear's beautiful wooden house. Hello, Boris. Hello, Barbara. After you finish your work, would you like to play hide and seek with us? Yes, said Boris. We would love to play hide and seek with you. We have finished cutting the logs now, so we can play. Let's start. Who will be the seeker? No, Snuffy, said Miffy. That wouldn't be fair. You could sniff around and find us too easily. You can have fun just watching us play. I'll be the first seeker and everyone else can hide. Miffy turned her back and slowly began counting to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine, ten. Miffy opened her eyes and shouted, Here I come, ready or not. Miffy began to search the forest. Meanwhile, Snuffy ran up to a tree and began to bark. Boris came out from behind the tree. That's not fair, Snuffy. Miffy is supposed to find us. Then Barbara and Grunty came out from behind the trees where they were hiding. Now we have to start all over again, they said. Yes, said Miffy. You're not supposed to be the seeker, Snuffy. You're not supposed to bark. You must stay quiet and let me look for everyone who is hiding. Once more, Miffy turned her back and closed her eyes, while Boris, Barbara and Grunty all ran off to hide. This time, Snuffy was very quiet. Here I come! 
ready or not, shouted Miffy. She began to look behind every tree. I see you, Boris. I see you, Grunty. Wherever she looked, Miffy could not find Barbara. Where was she? I'm worried that Barbara may be lost, said Miffy. I've looked behind every tree. Now you can bark, Snuffy. Help us find Barbara. Snuffy ran straight to one tree and began to bark loudly. But Barbara wasn't there. Snuffy carried on barking. They all looked up, sure enough. There was Barbara on a branch way up in the tree. What a great place to hide, said Miffy. Without Snuffy, I would never have found you. In Miffy's schoolroom, there was a plain white wall. Miffy raised her hand and asked her teacher, Wouldn't it be nice if we could decorate the wall with some pretty paintings? We can make some pictures and put them up on the white wall. That's a great idea, Miffy, said her teacher. The teacher handed out paper, pencils and paints. Soon everybody was busy drawing. Miffy drew a lovely flower. Melanie made some drawings of seashells. Aggie drew a fish. Winnie drew a boat with flags on it. Miffy used yellow paint for her flower and green paint for the stem and leaves. Aggie painted her fish with blue and yellow stripes. Winnie coloured her boat blue. She painted the flags red, yellow and blue. I don't know what to draw next, said Melanie when her picture was finished. Neither do I, said Winnie. But we need lots more pictures to cover the wall, said Miffy. Come on, children, said their teacher. It's a lovely day outside. Bring your drawing things and let's go outdoors. You will find many things to draw if you look around. Soon the children were looking all over the playground. Miffy found some more colourful flowers to draw. Melanie drew a picture of a tiny red butterfly. And Winnie made a drawing of a very large tree. There were many different things to draw outside. At the end of the afternoon, the children had made lots of different drawings. The teacher was very happy with all the new pictures for the wall. But would they all fit? We must be careful to put all of the paintings close together so that there will be enough room for all of them, she said. But there was not enough room and some of the children were disappointed that their paintings were not on the wall. Melanie raised her hand. I've an idea, she said. Why don't we change the paintings every day? so that everyone can have a chance to put their painting on the wall. What a good idea, Melanie, said the teacher. That's just what we shall do. 
And that way, we can make even more drawings. All the children cheered. Miffy said, Now it will be more fun than ever to study here. And this was true. Every day, the classroom wall was decorated with different beautiful paintings. Miffy and Melanie were playing together in Miffy's garden, throwing a colourful ball back and forth. Melanie threw the ball high into the air and Miffy couldn't see where the ball landed. As she looked for the ball behind a tree, she discovered something else. It was an egg, a blue egg. How lovely, said Miffy. She forgot all about her lost ball and looked with wonder at the little blue egg. What do you think is inside it, Melanie? She said. Just then, Poppy Pig came by. I see you have a blue egg, said Poppy. Do you think you get blue carrots from blue eggs? I don't think so. Carrots don't come from eggs. Melanie said, My granny says that blue eggs have blue socks inside of them. I don't think so. You buy socks in a shop. Eggs come from birds. There must be a bird's nest in one of these trees. Melanie looked up and saw a bird's nest with a big red bird sitting in it. Miffy wondered, can a blue egg come from a red bird? Poppy said, I'm pink and my mother and father are also pink. Melanie said, I'm brown and my mother and father are brown too. Miffy said, maybe with eggs it's different. We know that yellow chicks come out of white or brown eggs. Poppy Pig lifted Miffy high enough so that she could put the blue egg back in the nest and under the red bird. The mother bird nestled over the blue egg and sang a happy song. Poppy found the lost ball. They all had great fun playing with the ball together. They laughed a lot. Suddenly, their laughter was joined by another sound. It was the cheeping of a baby bird. There it was, a tiny red bird in the nest. Miffy realised that a colour on the outside doesn't tell you what's inside. I knew all the time that carrots don't come from eggs, Miffy, said Poppy Pig. I was just making a joke about the blue carrots. Me too, said Melanie. Of course I know that socks don't come from eggs. Now we know that red birds can come from blue eggs, said Miffy. How wonderful! Miffy loved to play in the snow. She loved to ride her sledge down the snowy hills. She loved to slide over the snow on her skis. She loved to lie in the snow 
and move her arms to make snow angels. What she liked best of all was to make big snow bunnies. It was a hard job and she needed help to make them. Who do you think came along to help her? It was Snuffy the dog. Snuffy loved to run and jump in the snow and when she saw Miffy trying so hard to push and roll a big snowball, she ran up and helped her. They pushed and pushed together. As the snowball rolled along, it picked up more and more snow. It got bigger and bigger. That's big enough for the snow bunny's body, said Miffy. Now we can roll a smaller snowball for the snow bunny's head. Miffy made a little snowball with her hands. Snuffy was able to push it along with her nose. But when it got bigger, Miffy joined in the pushing until it was big enough to be the snow bunny's head. Now we must put it on top of the big snowball, said Miffy. No matter how they tried, they could not lift the heavy snowball. Just then, Miffy's friend Boris Bear arrived. Hello, Miffy, said Boris. What are you doing? We're trying to make a giant snow bunny, said Miffy. But its head is too heavy and we can't lift it. I have an idea, Miffy, said Boris. I was taking these planks to my workshop, but we can use them to make a ramp to the top of the big snowball. Boris placed the planks against the snow bunny's body. The planks made a perfect ramp right to the top of it. Now they could roll the smaller snowball up the ramp. It was still hard work, but it was not so hard as lifting it would be. There it was! At last! The snow bunny's head was resting right on top of its body. Then Miffy went to find two sticks to make the ears. She stuck the two sticks into the top of the head. They don't look like Bunny's ears, said Miffy. She had an idea. She packed snow firmly around one stick. She packed more snow around the other stick. Two perfect bunny ears. Snuffy ran off over the snow and returned with two rubber balls she often played with. Miffy laughed. She pushed the balls into the snow bunny's head. Now he has eyes, said Miffy. He can see what a wonderful job we did. It was all with your help, Snuffy and Boris. You're such clever friends. Finally, Miffy added a carrot to make the snow bunny's nose. Now the snow bunny was complete.